Uh, my name is Jinghua Yang, people call me Z, and I am the founder and executive producer at Serenity Forge. Can you talk a little bit about what you're showing here at uh, ID at Xbox uh, GDC 2018? Yeah, we're showing Once Upon a Coma, which is a psychological narrative adventure game where you play as a boy named Pete who wakes up from a coma to find out that all of the parents went missing. So you've got to go out there and figure out what's going on. You know, I had a chance to just play it a little bit ago, and one thing I noticed is that the gameplay loop is very puzzle-driven, but it's also a platformer. Can you talk about uh, what kind of game this is? I know you're describing it as an adventure, but it definitely seems to draw on multiple genres. I think the easiest way to describe it is if you take um, something more narrative-driven like Limbo or Night in the Woods and mash it up with something a little bit more combat-driven like Hollow Knight or Ori in the Blind Forest, and you just put the two together, you form this very Zelda-like but still 2D uh, adventure game. So yeah, I noticed uh, there was a, a, the ability to chop uh, grass up. Is that something you were inspired by Zelda for? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you know, not gonna lie, there's also a bird in the game uh, that you have seen that is also you know somewhat Zelda inspired. Uh, but at the same time, you know, you could say that Hollow Knight has very similar mechanics where you can destroy environments. And I think it's just one of those things where uh, it's a small uh, polish that, uh, as a developer, we added uh, that adds a lot of just real world um, kind of uh, immersion uh, for a player. And like you said, the main character is coming out of a coma, and a lot of the dialogue involves the character figuring out what the heck's going on. Uh, what has that allowed for you for, as a storyteller to accomplish with the game? So one of the main things that we wanted to address with the game is that it is psychological, right? Uh, one of the things that we tell people is that art is up to the beholder. And that is whatever it is as a player you interpret for the story to be um, is the truth. And uh, you, you see that a lot in more modern uh, game d design. I think uh, Dear Esther is really the one that really kick-started that. Um, and we wanted to pull that into an otherwise very fun, quirky, whimsical, uh, but still melancholy uh, type of adventure game so that everyone uh, could have a unique experience that's based on what they have had personally in the past. And I think another thing you had mentioned was that you, you didn't want to make a game that was too hard but at the same time, I think you've accomplished making a game that has good replay value. So what did you guys look at from a design perspective to execute on that? I think the, when, whenever we look at game design, our main focus is always what is the emotional arc? What is the player feeling at that moment? And how can we create the most thoughtful and the most uh, articulate emotional arc to, to, to drive that type of engagement, right? Um, we believe that combat is simply a tool, not, not the goal. Uh, combat is just a tool to try to enhance that uh, emotional engagement for a player. So as soon as the combat gets in the way of the, a very strong emotional engagement, engaging uh, game, um, then we would like to uh, you know, lower that a little bit. And as you, you have seen with the game, uh, the combat is present, but it's only there to serve a particular purpose to kind of advance the narrative in some ways. And uh, just talk about the puzzle aspect of it real quick. Um, some of the level design, like you use hints to go back and it, it almost forces you into a loop until you figure out, like the, the clue's been staring at you for a few minutes until you figure it out. Uh, I saw one, one example was with a piano, one was with uh, a text that was ble had blood on it. Uh, what, are, what, are, what are some of your inspirations for the puzzle aspects of the game? I think the puzzle uh, puzzles really came from more of an old school type of design. Uh, you know, we play as designer was we play a lot more old school games and we play a lot more indie games. And I think uh, it's a lot more rampant in AAA where you really have to you know hold the hands of the player and introduce new content constantly. Um, we introduce new content too, but we like to. Uh, Maybe I guess the, the way I would put it is to add a little bit more uh, like critical thinking in, in the puzzles. So you know, we, we provide the player with a type of playground almost where you can go around, poke around, and try new things. And if it doesn't work, just try something else. Uh, eventually, you'll get there uh, no matter what. And uh, you know, ultimately, uh, we believe that that makes the most, uh, again, emotionally engaging experience. You know, and games like yours tend to frustrate me, and I like the ability to just put them down and pick them up and play. A perfect system for that would be the Nintendo Switch. Can you talk about some of the platforms that you're going to be releasing the game on? 
Yeah, we're looking to release the game this September on the PC, definitely. Uh, we'll be aiming to re release the Nintendo Switch before the year is over, and early next year we'll be releasing on Xbox One and PS4. And where can people find out more about your company and more about the game? Uh, you can go to our website at serenityforge.com, uh, or also follow us on Twitter or Instagram or whatever. Uh, Facebook, there's a social media, um, so, uh, which is all under Serenity Forge.